Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Uh, this time we are doing all things autopilot, uh, traffic aware, cruise control, whatever you want to uh, call it. Um, the whole purpose of this video essentially is uh, um, I'm in the city today and we're heading back to the hills and I just wanted to give a test to see uh, how much can one really rely on autopilot for most of the drive home. So yes, we're gonna take um, the, the highway, so we're gonna take some tolls as we go through. Um, like I said, I wanna really test and see how much I could potentially trust autopilot to take me most of the way home on the highway. Um, right now we are on the, uh, I think it's called the Western Distributor. Um, we're heading towards the Harbour Bridge and then we'll be taking, uh, what is it, Harbour Bridge, um, Lane Cove Tunnel M2. So essentially I'm going to try use it um, as much as I can. So technically I should be using it uh, right now actually. So let's turn that on. So um, I've got autopilot on right now. I'll give you guys my honest opinion on um, when I am deciding to disengage from it and when I'm actually going to be taking it off uh, autopilot, whether it's for lane change or something else or to put it on just cruise control. Um, key note is I haven't got enhanced autopilot as an option and so what that means is if I do want to change lanes then I do actually need to uh, remove um, autopilot or turn off autopilot um, in that regard and so the camera mounted today uh, I've got this one here obviously front facing me over here so you could just see me um, and then I've got the one up here that you might or might not be able to see um, and that one there should give you a fairly firm view on uh, what's in front of me. Um, also a bit of the steering wheel so you can see when I engage and disengage um, autopilot or um, traffic aware cruise control here on the right side. And you should also be able to see the screen over here. So, so far since activating it, um, I haven't really done anything yet in terms of turning it on or haven't wanted to change lanes. So we're all good. Um, now, excuse the little rattles if you guys do hear that, and I don't know if you can now, but I definitely can. Hopefully it doesn't come through. Um, it's just some of the clips that I've got rattling um, a little bit from the sunshade that I uh, took down so I could mount the camera. So I didn't end up removing those clips uh, just because it was faster, but uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. So either way, uh, I'm not gonna turn on any music, no radio or anything, so I'm literally just gonna have a drive. I'll fast forward the video as we go through so that you guys aren't, um, you don't get bored so I'll make it a bit faster in some instances and I'll talk you guys through some of the stuff that I, I guess I'm feeling here that uh, might not translate in the video. Um, if you have any questions uh, drop them down below and um, yeah but so far just since jumping onto the Western Distributor um, and if I have got the highway name wrong a view on uh, what's in front of me um, also a bit of the steering wheel so you can see when I engage and disengage um, autopilot or um, traffic aware cruise control here on the right side and you should also be able to see the screen over here. So, so far since activating it um, I haven't really done anything yet in terms of turning it on or haven't wanted to change lanes so we're all good. Um, now, excuse the little rattles if you guys do hear that, and I don't know if you can now, but I definitely can. Hopefully it doesn't come through. Um, it's just some of the clips that I've got rattling um, a little bit from the sunshade that I uh, took down so I could mount the camera. So I didn't end up removing those clips uh, just because it was faster, but uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. So either way, uh, I'm not going to turn on any music, no radio or anything, so I'm literally just going to have a drive. I'll fast forward the video as we go through so that you guys aren't, um, you don't get bored so I'll make it a bit faster in some instances and I'll talk you guys through some of the stuff that I, I guess I'm feeling here that uh, might not translate in the video. Um, if you have any questions uh, drop them down below and um, yeah but so far just since jumping onto the Western Distributor um, and if I have got the highway name wrong uh, please correct me. Um, either way, since jumping on, I have not had to hit the brakes or change anything yet. I'm staying in the same lane, so so far it seems like it's all good. And we've set it to 70 kilometers max per hour. And uh, yeah, you'll see that there's a digital sign up there that just said 
60 this car did not register that now up ahead so I'm just scrolling down to 60 now you'll see right here it automatically disengaged because with this lane split here it actually didn't know which way to go and also it didn't pick up that um, it was a 60 zone just a bit before that so you'll see that the blue lines have disengaged it's now just um, it's just now on traffic aware cruise control which essentially means that um, it's currently just driving at um, the the maximum speed that it's uh, set to so I've just uh, updated the scroll wheel or the speed to the maximum of 60 kilometers per hour and so I'm actually not stepping on the accelerator pedal at all um, I've just used it to help guide the speed based on the cruise control and then I'm just steering so really I should be able to turn it back on now so for the ones that aren't aware uh, essentially on your right hand side stalk you've got um, you've got D and R and then the one below you'll see looks like a little speedo uh, cruise control icon um, I'll put a picture up in a bit more detail or I'll do a overlay of a photo of it essentially you pull down as you know to start driving or to put the car into D um, if you pull it down again it goes into traffic aware cruise control now in your settings you can also set um, auto steer for autopilot which is a beta function so if you pull down twice it will engage um, autopilot so at the moment with traffic aware cruise control you can see that maximum speed over here is a uh, 60 k's an hour even though it says 80 because um, it does sometimes read signs that are even um, for the other side of the road or for the, uh, the other lanes I mean now I just got a bit of phantom braking here uh, I've just stepped on the accelerator a little bit it's just dropped from 60 down to 51 so I've had to step on it a little bit um, but right now we're back on to 60 I haven't re-engaged autopilot yet so the crash course again was uh, once you're in D you pull it down once it's traffic aware cruise control which essentially means you steer and the car just goes to the speed limit for whatever speed it's been currently set to you then use your right hand scroll wheel to scroll up and down for the speed and that's literally it so it's actually really handy if you're if you know that you just want to go at max the speed limit but you want to weave in and out of uh, any potential lanes um, and then the next thing is oh you'll see the fuel or you may have seen that uh, cars braking a little bit um, again I'm still on traffic aware cruise control so let's uh, engage autopilot and see how we go so autopilot essentially is uh, pulling down twice on the right hand uh, stock and you'll hear that beep or that chime if you've got that activated and then you'll see that there was a warning notification that says please keep your hand on uh, on the steering wheel and then you'll see the blue lines over here you'll also see a blue steering wheel icon up here and then the blue D which essentially all helps indicate that our autopilot is currently on um, and again we're just traveling at 60 k's an hour and it says max 60 k's and it looks like finally up ahead we might be heading to into the 80 zone so we should be able to up our speed in a moment uh, shortcut for the ones that aren't aware you can actually up your speed to match whatever speed limit just by holding down the right stalk so you can scroll up on the wheel over here which you can see um, goes up here on the speed or if I hold down on the right stalk you'll see that it should automatically go to 80 there you go so this is essentially on autopilot now so so far since we've left We've had one little small issue of phantom braking um, and then we've had it not read a speed sign properly and then on the lane split the car didn't know which way to go so it's taken itself off autopilot. That's about it so far so that's the honest truth. So right now we're on uh, still the same road, still the same long road. This essentially rolls out, it splits off to the left, the road ahead. Uh, left side goes to Pacific Highway um, you keep going straight you can actually so if you get off this highway um, it essentially takes you through to Chatswood area um, and then if we stay on right now it's essentially going to take us through Lane Cove Tunnel uh, which is where we're headed back to the hills 
And so there's a lane split here again. So let's have a look at what the car is going to do. I might have to pull to the right in a sec. No, the car pulled itself to the right this time. It actually didn't look like it even recognized um, the split to the left. So remember guys, the car itself currently uh, does not have the enhanced autopilot option. This is essentially just whatever you get as the standard car. Um, if you've got a Model 3, a Model Y, it doesn't even matter what spec uh, you have. This is just the basic autopilot. So you've seen the truck just pull in, uh, just car slowed down to 73, 74 kilometers an hour. And again, it's still saying that 80 kilometers is the max. And uh, yeah, so far so good. Now, the other thing I want to talk about now is, I guess, uh, the, the distance. So, you know that um, traffic aware cruise control essentially means that there's a radar or user sight or vision um, and it looks at the car in front of you and it looks at how far or how many cars ahead you want to you want to have as as the gap so at the moment i believe that this should reference a two car gap now how you can change that is um, on the right steering wheel so you've got the two scroll wheels um, the left one is obviously for the volume and some of the other functions the right one is purely for um, autopilot or traffic aware cruise control so as I said earlier when you scroll up or down on the wheel it helps adjust your speed if you actually click left or click right that's where you can adjust the the gap so at the moment uh, let's have a quick look so at the moment you can see or you might be able to see I'll click right again you'll see down here uh, that there's a vehicle distance which is set at two and it seems like we can't set it as one because this is all vision based and I believe that um, based on vision based uh, cars that two car gap is the closest that you can get. So this is a two car gap with this truck at the moment and if I flick back to three we'll see what the car does. At the moment we're doing 73 k's, it's slowed down to 70 k's, 69, 68 kilometers an hour to help create that buffer or that space. So this is a three car gap at the moment. Now there's a truck behind me as well. You guys, I don't have a camera there, but I don't think I'm game enough to slow it down uh, any further. And now there's a bus on my left that is actually uh, trying to indicate and come in. So all big cars everywhere, just don't touch me. And now there's a truck on this side as well. Um, so as I said, this is currently a three car gap. So as we're heading uphill, um, we know that the car may potentially slow down or generally speaking, most cars will, will slow down. Um, you'll see that because of autopilot and this is an EV, um, it still feels very seamless and the car will still pick up whatever speed it needs to be at based on um, autopilot. Um, so as I said this is the three car gap at the moment and if we just have a quick look I believe oh, so it looks like you can keep seven car gap oh I need to cancel I've activated the voice hold on a sec cancel Oh, it's cancelled the map. Oh well, either way, either way, at the moment, uh, seven car gap. So let's have a look at how that looks like. And uh, yeah, so as I said, the summary is in terms of the distance, um, controlling the distance, it's on the right scroll wheel and you just flick it left to right. At the moment, this is a seven car gap. Um, I do need to update the speed to 100 zones. So just hold down the right stalk and you'll see that's updated uh, there. So yeah, this is currently a seven car gap. So supposedly it's seven at the moment. So we're doing 85 Ks an hour. It doesn't look like, or 86. Doesn't look like I'm gonna hit 100 yet because of that truck ahead.
but uh, this is essentially the seven car gap. So let's skip it by two and I'll show you guys uh, how it looks like if we skip back down to five. So this is going to be updating to five car gap in a moment. So you'll see the car accelerate as we get towards that speed. And so really remember the whole purpose of this video is I just want to show you guys that heading I guess a further distance. So we're doing from the city uh, out to the hills in northwest Sydney um, that you know if you really do do not enjoy driving or if you really just want to rest then I guess just take your mind a little bit off the full concentration of driving. Um, autopilot, cruise control, you know all, all that stuff is fantastic. Um, obviously having a bit of a rest with my legs they're still they're still on the pedal just as a safeguard I guess but um, definitely not not as much fatigue there's a bit of, a little bit less of that um, I guess, I guess uh, harsh concentration so uh, yeah so far so good nothing else uh, this is it was a five car gap and we're currently doing 83 K's an hour in a hundred zone So, uh, five car gap, we're going to close it back down to two car gap and you'll see how the uh, Well, I guess we've got a bit close to this car, um, but it did seem to pick up fairly quickly to close in on that two car gap. And uh, if you guys can hear the rattle, apologies again uh, for the ones that have, I guess, skipped through. Um, it's just the clips from the sunshade that I didn't get uh, enough time to remove. I just wanted to get in and go. Alright, so coming up ahead, um, you guys might be able to see uh, 80 zone flashing, so it converts from 100 down to 80. Usually the speed updates over here as soon as you go past, so let's see if it's recognized it. It's 100. Yep, that actually recognized that. So we'll hold down the right stalk and it should adjust to 80 k's max. And because we didn't even hit the hit past 80 k's, it's just adjusted now and we've just accelerated through to the 80. Too sure how much of the video has been cut off but uh, we're currently driving from uh, from the city out through to the hills and uh, the summary essentially is or the purpose of this video was just to show you guys how easy it is to drive back and uh, if if you trust autopilot or uh, traffic aware cruise control or not um, I've been using it a bit more just to experiment. Now just to be clear or in case the pre previous bits of the video didn't record properly. Um, in a nutshell, we do not have um, the enhanced autopilot in this car. It's just stock standard. Um, and basically it's as you get it. So whatever Model 3, whatever Model Y you've got, um, this is the same thing. And I'm just driving here in to show you guys uh, how easy it is. Now remember, uh, 100 zone now, it was 80, so hold down the right stall, then it should Alright, so it's currently adjusted to 100 k's an hour. And 
at 100. Um, right now, the car still feels fairly confident. Um, doesn't look like we're losing out on, I guess, any phantom braking or any issues that I can foresee. A lot of cars hitting the brakes. This car hasn't come to a brake yet. Oh, yep, now it's coming to a brake. Now it's, oh, now it's really heavy on the brakes. And, yeah, so it's a bit odd. Uh, I don't think I'm a fan of that, considering it's vision-based. It should, definitely should have seen the car ahead. So, for context, uh, what has just happened is you're in a 100 zone. Uh, we've been driving forward, and um, you could see, I could clearly see that all the cars were... Um, braking so pretty much it was all red lights in front of me um, this car did not actually start hitting the brakes as yet so and it hit the brakes really late so instead of doing a gradual stop um, the car essentially got a lot closer and then it's almost as if it just slammed on the brakes because we literally went from about 80 k's an hour I think it is and it went straight down to like 60 60 odd um, I'll have to look at the video again in the replay to see what it was, but it essentially just slammed the brakes. Um, but so far, the recap, oh, got a bit of phantom braking there just then. Um, but so far, there's been, I think, about three instances of phantom braking. Um, there's been no lane changes that I've done. I haven't really been bothered, just wanted to kind of test this just straight road without lane changing. Um, and I've essentially stayed on autopilot most of the time. The one time it did come off autopilot, um, it was essentially uh, when there was a lane split. It didn't know which way to, to go, so it just turned off and it got me to take over. So for the ones that haven't used autopilot or traffic aware cruise control much, uh, if you don't touch the steering wheel for a while or you're holding it really, really lightly, uh, it does actually have a little notification down on the bottom right here, just pretty much beneath your car, um, telling you to add some pressure or give it a slight nudge, just to make sure uh, you are essentially driving and you're okay. Uh, I actually don't know what happens if you don't um, if you don't do anything. So if you guys know, drop it down in the comments. Uh, it's not something that I've tried. So I'd say we're a good 70% there um, towards the hills because this is essentially the one of the first hills stop on the M2 motorway at uh, Oaks Road in Carlingford. And uh, yeah, I haven't changed lanes so far. So if, if you guys want to get through to your destination faster, obviously that involves, I guess, a lot more weaving in and out. Um, and yeah, what you essentially need to do in that regard is take it off um, autopilot, just keep it on the speed if that's what you want. Um, if you don't want to exceed the speed limit, use the traffic aware cruise control and then just steer in and out as you go. Now the thing that I have found uh, so far is when it hits the brakes, it hits it pretty hard. Oh, another phantom braking, so I have to step on the pedal. So there will be one lane change that I'll need to do because uh, to get out through to the hills I'll need to take that uh, left exit but we might leave it for a little bit before we get in. Um, you, you may find for the ones that haven't used it and you want to use it again that if you're on autopilot and you just force it to turn, yes it does disengage autopilot but it does make it feel a bit more abrupt. Um, if you want the smoothest way possible, uh, what I recommend is uh, have your foot on the, on the pedal, step down a little bit, um, and then disengage from autopilot, um, and then do whatever manoeuvre you need to do. 
So to disengage, you essentially just pull up on the right lever and then you do what you need to do. So again, the recap. Um, traffic aware cruise control, um, then you've got autopilot with auto steer that you can turn on. So I've turned on auto steer. So traffic aware cruise control essentially is just about matching the speed um, with either radar or vision. In the case of this car, it's vision. And it's about keeping the distance in front of you um, to whatever number amount of cars. So in, in my case, uh, it's set to two. And you can have it set all the way back to seven cars length all the way down to two. Um, and then you've got autopilot, which includes the auto steer, if that's what you want. Um, and then it's also lane keeping as well uh, in, that, in that regard. And in order to change the distance for the cars, it's just the right scroll wheel where you flick it left and right to change that. Speed wise, it's just scroll up and down. Um, traffic aware cruise control, you just pull down once. You pull down twice for autopilot and for either one of them, if you want to cancel it, just flick the lever up. So I'll probably need to flick it up to change lanes in a moment. So you'll see, here we go, we'll come out, we'll indicate and we'll head out. And let's just turn it back on. So double tap and it says there, please keep your hands on the wheel. And so this will take it all the way through to 100 k's an hour. Oh, bit of phantom braking there. I've just accelerated out. And just so you guys know, um, if you do, you may have heard me mention it a couple of times, when you do get phantom braking, and, and so for the ones that aren't aware, phantom braking is essentially just when the car potentially sees something, or I guess there's a glitch in the matrix. Um, it just thinks that there's something there, and so it brings the car to, not a stop necessarily, but it just slams on the brakes. So it's sort of like a random braking incident, I guess, for better use of words um, if you do experience that um, just step on the throttle don't be too concerned um, you can step on the throttle when it's on autopilot at any point in time to speed up a little bit um, and yeah so you'll see up ahead is the exit to the hills so we've made it in 35 minutes we've driven about 30 k's 159 watt hours per kilometer and so uh, let's do a recap. So uh, I don't remember off the top of my head, so I'm just gonna cancel cruise control as I'll most likely take over driving now. So the recap of all of this, I think we've experienced phantom braking probably a good five times, I'm going to guess, uh, during this time. Uh, it did have the, it did come off um, autopilot itself once from memory and that was at the lane split because it didn't know which lane it was going to go. Um, I didn't indicate in and out of many lanes except the one just now to get off on the highway here. Um, and what else was there? So phantom braking and yeah look otherwise it missed, it seemed like it did miss one uh, speed sign update. Other than that it seems to have picked up the rest and it's also picked up um, other digital LED signs um, so that's worked out pretty well and do I feel tired compared to driving an ice car I'd say no the, the, look at the end of the day whenever whatever car you're in if you're using cruise control you're not going to be as tired as if you had to drive with uh, I guess two pedals or three pedals slamming on the brakes you know slamming on the accelerator if you're in traffic the whole traffic aware cruise control works out fantastic so I definitely have no complaints there um, in summary what do I think of it look I like it uh, I'm very keen to test it more because I've only used it a handful of times and the other thing that I want to at some point in time test and use as well um, is potentially enhanced autopilot so if you guys do have enhanced autopilot or you have bought the 
um, FSD package. Uh, keen to hear your thoughts. Um, this was essentially my experience. So again, this is uh, what's month now? We're in mid October 2023, Sydney, Australia. We're in the Tesla Model Y performance. We've given uh, pretty much a drive from the city up through to the hills on the highway, mainly using autopilot. A couple of instances of phantom braking, um, nothing alarming, and it's only come off once from um, autopilot, which I guess is somewhat expected. And yeah, so essentially from a 30 minute, 38 minute drive from the city out through to here, wherever you live, if you're in the hills, um, I guess it's probably been a relaxing drive in, in some instances. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope this was informative. If you guys have any questions at all, um, ask below. I'll be more than happy to answer it. Hope you guys are well. Uh, welcome to all the new subscribers. And yeah, look, if, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing as uh, it will help my channel go a long way. We're still um, a very small channel compared to a lot of others. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you soon in another video and take care.